السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ برکاتہ نحمد نسلی علیہ رسول الکریم اما بعد فوز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربش رحلی صدری ویسر علی عمری واہل العقدم من السانی یفقہ قولی ربی ضدنی علما ویلکم یو آل جز نمبر تھری فرسٹ ویل سی واٹ وی گنو کور ان جز نمبر تھری ایز وی آر ڈوئنگ جز ون Uh, juice two we completed now we are doing juice three in juice three ranks of rasul will be discussed spending in charity allah's attribute that is ayatul kursi there is no compulsion in religion and wali friends of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wali friends of shaitan confrontation of ibrahim al islam and the king namrud example of bringing death to life ibrahim al islam question of life after death the parable of spending in charity what makes charity worthless charity was a show of spending the most portion of your wealth then allah's uh, promise was a shaitan promise giving charity in public and private who is eligible for charity reward for charity prohibition of usury that is uh, uh, interest Taking interest is like declaring war against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Rasul. All business dealing must be reduced to writing loans, debts and buying on credit. Witnesses are required in all transactions. If writing is not possible, take a security deposit, pledge, mortgage. Allah will call to account true belief of uh, prophets and Muslims believers supplication. Yes, then Surah Al-Ala Imran starts. It is uh, Allah who has revealed Torah, Gospel and the Quran. And decisive verses, uh, allegorical verses, supplication of the believers, warning to the unbelievers, lesson from the battle of Badr, conference of this life versus life in the hereafter. And testimony of Allah about himself and then true religion in the sight of Allah um, is uh, Al-Islam. warning of unbelievers faith of the jews and christian allah is the one who control the kingdom and honor order to obey and follow prophet high ranking prophets birth and growth of maryam al islam supplication of zakaria al islam for his son yahya al islam then uh, status of maryam al islam among the women of the world and the news of isa al islam then uh, the birth of isa al islam and son of maryam miracle given to isa al islam followers of the isa al islam were muslims plot to kill isa al islam allah's promise to isa al islam birth of isa al islam is compared to the creation of adam and mubhala calling allah's decision if isa al islam birth is disputed that is mentioned then after that call for unity with jews and christians on that is common between them and muslims religion of ibrahim al islam was islam muslims are the followers of ibrahim al islam hypocrites among jews and christians there are some good news and christians and some bad and the cheat is uh, quoting their book uh, Uh, Isa al Islam never said to worship him instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Isa al Islam never asked anyone to make him God. The covenant of Allah with all prophets concerning the last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No religion is acceptable to Allah other than Islam. Curse of Allah, the angels, and all mankind on the unbelievers. Fate of unbelievers who die as unbelievers. So here, this is the juice number three. And in this, uh, we are going to learn about uh, Ayat al-Kursi. So Ayat al-Kursi, we are going to learn about that. Surah al-Bakhra here continues with Ayah number 253. When Surah al-Bakhra starts with Ayah number 253, before this, we are going to check our heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, انما المؤمنون الذين اذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم واذا تليت عليهم اياته اياته زادتهم ايمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون سورة الانفال اي نمبر 2 the believers are only those who when allah is mentioned their hearts become fearful let us examine the state of our heart is the heart attentive towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
when these verses are recited to them it increases them in their iman let's examine our hearts the purpose of listening to the quran and reading the quran is to increase in our iman to strengthen our faith let us not just listen to the quran with our ears and allow it to reach to the heart inshallah wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun and upon their lord they rely and allazina yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun surah al-anfal ayah number 3 the one who established prayer and from what we have provided them they spent so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says such people ulaika humul mu'minuna haqqa those are the believers in truth lahum darajatun in the rabbihim wal maghfira wa rizqun karim for them a decree of high position with their lord and maghfira maghfira here talking about forgiveness and a noble provision in this verses we learn that when the verses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recited upon the believers it increases them in faith sheikh asadi said this means that the reason for this uh, that they listen to the verses of allah with the present heart they listen to the verses of allah with attentiveness so when they listen they actually reflect upon them when they reflect upon the verses this results in the increase of faith because that the bur reflect upon quran is actually one of the action of the heart so when a person does the dabbur on the quran what happens first of all they get to know the meaning which they were unaware of or they get reminded of matters which they had forgotten or they develop the desire to perform good deeds or the desire to receive the generosity and reward of their lord or the hereafter uh, and the fear of punishment and the fear of sin is produced in their heart and all of this matter increases the iman so i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as we go through the journey of the quran we reflect upon each juz every day this becomes a means of increase in our iman so that we come to know of what we were previously unaware of we get reminded of the things which we had forgotten we develop the motivation to perform good deeds we develop the desire to receive the reward of our lord we develop the fear of his punishment and we stay away from the sin may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase and in our iman faith ameen inshallah we'll begin juz number 3 of the quran tilka ar-rusul faddalna ba'duhum ala ba'din minhum man qallam allah wa rafa ba'duhum darajat those messengers some of them because to exceed others among them they those to whom allah spoke and raised some of them in decree we see over here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention his prophets his messenger the fact is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent prophets and messenger in every era for the guidance of mankind it is said that they were about a uh, 124000 prophet or in some narration 114000 regardless there has been over 100000 prophets and out of them 300 were messengers they were rusul and among them also allah subhanahu wa taala chose some above others in different ways for instance five of the messengers they are known as ulul azm those of determination and there are no al islam ibrahim al islam musa al islam isa al islam and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so these messengers were such that some of them were given preference over the other and this was was not a number of different ways we see that even within the creation we see how things are not equal the five fingers on your hand are not the same they are not identical people do not have equal wealth all trees are not the same and there are multiple wisdoms be- behind this differences so our job is not to constantly compare between the things and where something has been given preference over another we should accept the reality we should not feel jealous over the other because this is the decision of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is his distribution and if we are given preference in some way then we should be grateful for what for that we should acknowledge that we should thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that so the messengers some of whom allah chooses above others so how was that allah tell us among them were those to whom allah spoke meaning he directly spoke to some of them 
such as Musa al-Islam, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He raised some of them in decrease, meaning they were given preference in other ways. For example, Ibrahim al-Islam was made the Imam, is the father of Prophet. He was the title of Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and gave Isa al-Islam, the son of Maryam, clear proofs. What kind of clear proofs? He could heal the blind leper. He performed various miracles that were unique to him among. All of the prophets and messengers, he performed them by the permission of Allah, Bismillah, and we supported him with the pure spirit, meaning with the angel Jibril. So Isa al-Islam even spoke as a child. If Allah had willed, those succeeding them would not have fought each other after the clear proofs had come to them, but they deferred, and some of them believe and some of them disbelieve, meaning. This is what happened to the nations of the prophets, and if Allah had willed, they would not have fought each other. But Allah does what He intends, meaning Allah given freedom to His servant. Some of them misuse His freedom. Then the believers are addressed. Two hundred and fifty-four, Surah Al-Baqarah, we are doing juz number three. Ya ayyuha al-lazina aman, O you who have believed, unfiqo spend from what. Mimma razaqnaakum. From what we have provided you, give forward, pass on from the things that we have given you. Don't just keep everything to yourself. And why give for your own benefit? Before there comes a day, meaning the day of judgment. What kind of day is that? In which there is no exchange and no friendship, no intercession, and the deniers they are truly the wrongdoers. So those who do not believe in Allah don't give Him His right. Such people are zalim. They are committing zulm, wrong on themselves. It hasn't been said that those who do zulm, those who do wrong, commit kufr. No, those who commit kufr are the ones who commit zulm. So this shows us that the disbelief is actually a form of injustice. And now the greatest verse of the Quran is mentioned, which is Ayat Al Kursi, the verse of the throne. Which is the best description of Allah Azza wa Jalla? This is a verse that protects the reciter against the shaitan, against the devils. It's a verse which takes its reciter to Jannah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Whoever recites Ayat Al Kursi immediately after every fard prayer, after every prescribed prayer, then there will be nothing standing between him and his entering Jannah except death. Meaning, the person who recites it after every salah, then." They will go to Jannah. So add this to the list of the things that you are going to do. Must recite Ayat Al Kursi after every fard prayer. Don't talk. Don't do anything. Just after fard prayer, like uh, recite Ayat Al Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illahu al Hayyul Qayyum. La ta kuzu sina tu. La ta kuzu hu sina tu. Wala nau. له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفى إنه إلا بإسمه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما قلفهم ولا يهيتون بشيء من إلمه إلا بما شاء وسيا كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو لليلزي We learned earlier about the power of Allah's name, the greatest and the blessing that His name contains. This ayat al Kursi contains five names of Allah, not one but five, and it is also contains twenty six attributes of Allah. The attributes of Allah are His qualities, His traits, such as the fact that He is the one, fact that drowsiness and sleep do not overtake Him. This ayah is filled with the praises of Allah, and this is why it is called the greatest verse, not the longest, but the most magnificent, the greatest verse. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna Allah lisana wa shafatain wa tuqaddisul malik." That it has a tongue and a lips, and it declares the purity, the holiness of the sovereign. Meaning, it glorifies Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. What does this ayah means? Allah, there is no deity except 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning Allah is the only one worthy of worship. Why? Because he is alone is Allah. He alone is the true God. Who is he? Al-Hayyul Qayyum. The ever living, the sustainer of all existence. He is the ever living. He is the one who is perfect existence. So he was always there. He will always remain because he is perfect in himself. He is perfect in all of his qualities. This is why he will never die. He will never suffer any decline because he is free from any imperfection. He is independent of all. In fact, he is the source of life. al Hay. Along with that, he is Al-Qayyum, the sustainer of all existence. So, he is extremely independent. So, he needs no one, but everyone needs him. Everyone depends on him. He is perfect in his action. Otherwise, how could anything exist? Al-Hayyul Qayyum. So, you see, if you don't get food, we die. If we develop respiratory issues, we don't get oxygen, we would die. A tiny microscopic virus can cripple us, look at down as the virus, you know, it, like no, no one can imagine that that small teeny tiny virus is killing. It can bring our lives, our infra, infrastructure, our business to a complete halt. This is why we must learn to rely upon not ourselves, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-hayy, wa tawakkal al-hayy, Allazi la yamut. Surah Al-Furqan, ayah number 58. Allah says, rely upon ever living, the one who does not die. Our reality is that, Kullu man alayha fan. Surah Al-Rahman, ayah number 26. Everyone upon the earth will perish. Wa yabqa wajhu rabbika zul jalali wal ikram. Surah Al-Rahman, ayah number 27. And there will remain the face of your Lord. Owner of the majesty and honor. So who is Allah? He is Al-Hayyul Qayyum. Not only does everyone's life existence depends upon him, their sustenance also depends upon him. So if he does not give, if he does not allow, not a thing could exist. Our existence is proof of his perfection. Our existence is proof of his knowledge, of his care. So perfect is he that neither drowsiness overtake him nor sleep, neither sleep overcomes him nor does he sleep by choice. Because sleep, remember, is a form of imperfection. Allah is free of any imperfection. He is al hayyul qayyum. He does not get tired. He does not need rest. So do not confuse him with the creation. He is a creator. To him belongs whatever is in the heaven, whatever is on, on the earth. Meaning he is the real owner. So everything besides him is actually owned by him. He is the creator. So everything beside him is his creation. He is the giver. So everything beside him is provided by him. So all are powerless before all are powerful. How powerless? Who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission? No one can speak before him without his permission. This is why our ultimate concern should be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the dunya and akhira both belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows what is presently before them, what will after them. This is how vast his knowledge is. Remember, Allah's knowledge is shamil, kamil, meaning it includes everything. So nothing is absent from his knowledge, complete kamil knowledge, perfect. So it is free of any error, no matter what place it is, no matter what time it is, no matter what deed it is. Allah knows about it all. So no one can lie to him. <coughs> Excuse me. No one can hide from him. No one can escape him. And they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. You see, we are only able to learn something when Allah allows us to know about it. So, knowledge is actually sustenance. It is a gift from Allah. And we are only able to know about Allah that which he allows us. That is the only through revelation because he is more knowledgeable about himself with anyone 
and so we if we want to know who allah is let us not make assumptions let us not hear what people say let us see how he describe himself wasiya kursiyo samawati wal ard his kursi his footstool extends over the heavens and the earth extends over the heavens and the earth meaning it is so vast that it could contain all of the skies all of the earth and yet the kursi is not his greatest creation this is arsh so vast his uh, he is his uh, sultan and their preservation tires him not he has been guarding them from beginning constantly providing deciding giving and his treasures have not diminished and he is aliul azim he is the most high so he is above all and everyone is beneath him everyone is below him and he is al azim he is most great he is the greater than all everyone is weak before him surah al baqara number 256 la ikraha fi din there shall be no compulsion in the religion this means no one can force another to become muslim and there is no need to do so because the right course has become clear from the wrong so when a person is muslim they must adhere to the laws of islam but when someone is not muslim there is no need to force them there is no need to correct them because the truth is clear so whoever disbelieve in taqwa and remember taqwa is anything that worshiped besides allah whatever name it has whoever disbelieves in taqwa then believes in allah only allah then such a person has grasped the most trustworthy handhold such a handhold that has no break in it meaning he has adopted a religion that will provide a solution to every problem and answer to every confusion and allah is ever living he is ever hearing and ever knowing allah huwa waliyul ladina amanu allah is the ali of those who believe this is the benefit of iman that a person receives the friendship of allah we all want right the help of allah we all want help of allah isn't it so the help of allah who believes yukhrijuhum min az-zulumati ila an-nur he brings them out from the darknesses into the night because he loves them so he recite he rectifies their affairs for them he takes care of them he helps them he does not surrender them he does not leave them to anyone else he ensure their guidance he gives them light the light of iman the light of knowledge the light of charity and when allah is the wali of a person in the world this means that he will be their wali their friend in the hereafter as well this is why make this your ultimate goal make allah your friend khalil so allah will be your friends and those who disbelieve those who reject allah those who turn away from their lord then their allies are taqut and what do they do then they take them out of the light into the darknesses so subhanallah once upon a time they were in light but when they turn away from light then taqut took them away out of light into darknesses so now they are misguided falling in wrong ways those are the companions of the fire they will abide eternally there in and this is such a terrible end that a person can have now with the peak now with the following verses through different stories we are uh, shown how allah subhanahu wa taala is the wali the friend of those who believe how he guided them how he strengthened them ayah number 258 surah al baqara have you not considered the one who argued with ibrahim al islam about his lord merely because allah had given him kingship it is said that this was a king namrud when ibrahim al islam said my lord is the one who gives life and causes death what an excellent proof ibrahim al islam gave uh, related to the religion and the final end of the creation so namrud said i give life and i also caused death it is said that he sent for two prisoners and he killed one of them and he spared the other and he said see i gave the death and i let uh, one live ibrahim al islam said indeed allah bring us the sun from the east so bring it from the west 
So Ibrahim Alislam didn't argue here. He just gave him another challenge. If you claim that you do all of these things, then try this. Show us your power. So what happened? The disbeliever were overwhelmed by astonishment. Boheta. And he was left speechless. But still he did not accept the truth. Why? Because Wallahu la yahdil qawmuz zalimin And Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Who are the wrongdoers? Those who refuse even after seeing the truth. Those who have made up their mind to deny no matter what evidence is presented to them. Now, one other example is given. I number 259 or consider such an example and as the one who passes by a township which had fallen into ruin. He said, how will Allah bring this life uh, after death? Meaning he wondered about the afterlife, about the resurrection like many people do. So Allah caused him to die for 100 years. Then he revived him and he said, how long have you remained? The man said, I have remained a day or a part of a day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, rather you have remained 100 years. Look at your food, your drink. It, it was not changed with the time. Meaning your food and drink did not grow stale uh, or moldy because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. That it should remain unchanged over time. And look at your donkey. We learn uh, in the ayah that it was completely decayed. The bones were rotting and we will make you a sign for the people. How? Because this man woke up after 100 years. This was truly a miracle. And look at the bones meaning of your donkey and how we raise them and then we cover them with flesh. So literally the donkey was revived back to life in front of him. And when it becomes clear to him, he said, I know Alamu. I know that Allah is over all things competent. Allah can do all things. Allah can bring life to those who are dead. We see that Namrud was not guided. Even though he was given a clear evidence. Why? Because he had already made up his mind about what he wanted to believe. Uh, so he was merely arguing with Ibrahim al-Islam. And um, here we see he was not seeking answer. He was debating. This person on the other hand was guided by because he had questioned. He was curious. He wanted to know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him. What is the difference? The difference is that one came from the place of arrogance and the other person came from the place of genuine humble curiosity. Remember, it is not wrong to ask. It is not wrong to wander. But, but it is wrong to think, I know it at all, it is wrong to be arrogant before the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to look into ourselves. If we are really seeking guidance, Hidayah, then Allah will grant us certainly. He will dispel our doubts because Allah is the friend of those who believe. He guides them. And now a third example is given. Another example about, you know, how the things with the, who those who are given, here talking about the people in ayah number 260, Surah Al-Baqarah, here is a mention about the people, 260, ayah number 260. Here it says, and mention then Ibrahim al-Islam said, uh, My Lord, show me Rabbi Arini. Oh my Lord, show me Kaifa Tohil Mauta. How you will guide, how you will give life to the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Have you not believed? Ibrahim al-Islam said, Yes. Walakin in qalbi. He believed, but he want tatmaina, like, you know, uh, itminan in his qalb. Look at this word, this particularly, he is talking about this. And But I ask only that my heart may be satisfied. 
we see that namrud had denied the second person was doubtful and ibrahim al islam was certain in faith and yet ibrahim al islam wondered the thing is that each person wonders but from a different place ibrahim al islam wanted uh, itminan he wanted contentment because the heart seeks assurance so allah subhanahu wa taala grant him that assurance allah said take four birds and uh, commit them to yourself train them then after slaughtering them put on each hill a portion of them then call them then will come flying to you in haste and know that allah is exalted in might and wise so he can do all things nothing at all is hard for him so remember there are levels of yaqeen there are levels of conviction the first level is ilmul yaqeen to be convinced of something because of factual knowledge second is ainul yaqeen to be convinced of something because of observation you have seen it with your own eyes third is haqqul yaqeen to be convinced because of experiencing the reality of something no matter how well a person knows about something and believes it laisa a khabru kal muayyin seeing something is not like knowing it observing bringing a higher level of faith and this is why ibrahim al islam wanted to see and he said arini show me how will resurrection happen and it is necessary for all of us to strengthen our yaqeen to increase to grow in our conviction because of ibn um, because ibn masud radiyallahu anhu said al yaqeen al iman kullah yaqeen is complete faith it is the highest level of the faith so ibrahim al islam requested for itminan for the greater conviction they then we are more worthy of that we should also seek ways of strengthening our faith learn ask seek clarity but always from the place of humility always from a place of faith not rejection not arrogance not argumentation remember iman faith grows with knowledge it also grows with the righteous deeds what kind of deeds we should perform so here ayah number 261 we are doing surah al-baqarah juz 3 here giving the example masalul ladina yunfiquna amwalahum we have learned in surah al-baqarah about various good deeds we have learned about salah about fasting zikr all are good here in the following verses we learn about sadaqa especially spending in the way of allah what is sadaqa charity the word sadaqa is actually from sid which is truthfulness when a person actually truly believe then they will spend in what they have and when a person gives when a person spend then it shows truthfulness of their belief how true is this person in their love for allah how honest is this person in believing the religion of allah and believing the promise of allah so what is the reward of spending in the cause of allah so ayah number 261 here talking about masalu allazina yunfiquna amwalahum fi sabil allah allah says the example of those people who spend their wealth in the way of allah in the way of allah what is that example is like that of a seed meaning of a grain which grows seven spikes one seed it grows into seven spikes seven stalks and in each spike is a hundred grains so how many grains do we have now 700 and all multiply his reward for him he will like multiplying it and allah is an encompassing and knowing there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever spend in the cause of allah fi sabilillah it will be recorded for him 700 fold you see one is to spend on those in need for example that you spend on their food clothing shelter medication this is excellent sadaqa for which is reward which will be by a means of protection for a person on the day of judgment imagine if a person spends on allah a person spend for his deen one is to spend on person on human being for his food needs and other is to spend on allah for his religion how blessed is that money which is given to allah subhanahu wa taala for the cause of his religion so that people can learn it they can practice it they can learn it so their doubts are removed their questions are answered they develop in their yakin you see we spend on promotion of our business 
but how blessed would that money which is spent for the promotion of allah's deen religion this kind of spending is such that reward is multiplied why is it reward multiplied why is it more than any other form of charity because it impacts is far rich when you feed hungry person you only benefit that hungry person once and you only benefit one person they eat the food and that's it but when you spend on the religion of allah you will benefit many and you benefit them perpetually in this life and in the next life for example if you give money to cover the cost for example online platform from where the people can learn the religion then imagine every single person who learns from it who does something good because of what they learn from there they are safe from the fire of hell because of what they learn they earn rewards in jannah because of what they learn guess what you have a share in all of that your charity reached so far your contribution had impact on someone's eternity so then what do you expect reward is endless so the way the allah has superiority over his creation then spending on the religion of allah also has superiority over spending on any other cause this is most afdal the most superior form of spending so make sure that as you spend in different causes spend specially for the cause of allah to support the religion of allah so that people can learn religion spend on such causes prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's a hadith if somebody gives in charity something that is equal to a date meaning something very small from their honestly earn money because nothing ascends to allah except good then allah will take it in his right hand and allah will bring it from for his owner as any one of you brings up a baby horse till it becomes like a mountain imagine like a mountain add to this fact that this charity is given the in the cause of allah how great would be it reward then ayah number 262 here talks about in this allazina yunfiquna amwalahum fi sabilillah so those who spend their wealth in the way of allah and then do not follow up what they have spent with the reminders that i gave such and such or other injury that i sponsored this platform i had never got the free entry such people will have the reward with their lord and there will be no fear concerning them nor will they grieve wala qawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun because they have made their investment with the one who definitely causes growth so we learn the etiquette of spending in the way of allah from here that do not hurt the feeling of those who have in fact help you by accepting your charity because remember there will be a time when there will be nobody to accept your charity then what will you do being able to give actually privilege it's an honor it's in fact a favor on you the one whom you give it so instead of hurting them reminding them of the favors that you have done what is better here in ayah number 263 qawlun ma'rufa kind speech and forgiveness qawlan ma'rufa wa maghfira khairum min sadaqatin yatba'uha aza wallahu ghaniyun halim so in in this ayah allah talks about kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury you see hurting people is something that destroy our acts of charity so the first focus on the kind speech on the good manner so that when you do give something you are able to preserve its reward wallahu ghaniyun halim and allah is free of need and forbearing meaning he does not need you to give to his servants then cause them hurt forgiveness is mentioned over here why because sometimes those whom you give to are the same people who actually hurt you so forgive them and if you cannot generous with your money then be generous with your word because wali kalima tu tayyibatu sadaqa a good word is a charity i number 264 and this is little bit longer i am ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing uh, to the people who are believer ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal aza who you who have believed do not invalidate your charities with reminders or injury as does 
one who spend his wealth only to be seen by the people like you know doing the riyadh to the show off meaning when you give in the way of allah then do not show off do not give it in order to seen by others because such a person does not believe in allah and the last day because he did then he would be given it with sincerity he would not remind people of it because if he give it for allah then it doesn't matter whether the people remember it or not allah remembers it his example is like that of a large smooth stone upon which is dust and is hit by a downpour that leaves it bare they are unable to keep anything of what they have earned and allah does not guide the disbelieving people meaning whatever they have done will go waste it will bring no reward whatsoever the entire reward will be wasted their efforts will be washed away the problem is that sometimes we indirectly mention the favors we have done to others you know we say things like we financially help someone we got grocery for them or we paid for their fees or we uh, gave a ride to someone and this hurts their honor so be private when it comes to the charity because you are not doing this for the sake of people you are doing this for the sake of allah so keep it buried keep it hidden keep it safe and secure with allah don't waste it away just like rain washed off mud off stone leaving them bare don't wash away your good deeds those who give charity with the sincerity and do not follow it with the reminders and hurtful words it is such people who will be safe from the fear and the grief wallahu la yahdil qaumul kafirin and ayah number 265 surah al baqarah wa masalu allazina yunfiquna again talking about those who spend and the example of those who spend their wealth seeking means to approval approval of allah ibtiga mardatillah and assuring reward for themselves what is their example it is like a garden on high ground which is hit by downpour or oh, so it yields its fruit in double and even it is not hit by downpour then a drizzle it is sufficient and allah of what you do is seen so this is what happen when a person gives with sincerity when a person spends happily whether it is a zakat or sadqa then they experience the joy the sweetness of faith as it mentioned over here ibtiga mardatillah tasbitam min anfusihim there is a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever does three things will experience tam sweetness of iman of them is wa ata zakat malihi tayyibatan biha nafsuhu he happily gives zakah of his wealth that is due on him happily and uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed us to fear allah perform five prayers to keep fast in the month of ramadan and give zakah happily give zakah happily and obey the leader what is the benefit he said you will enter jannah of your lord so spending for the sake of allah with happiness with sincerity it is a means of entering jannah remember that giving is something that helps the giver before it help others research in positive psychology shows that giving actually make us happy studies have shown that when subjects are given 5 dollars for example with instruction to give the money to stranger their happiness increases more than subjects who were given 20 dollars to spend on themselves imagine giving something to someone else will bring you more joy compared to what you spend on yourself giving even has a positive impact on your health giving promotes cooperation it promotes social connection it evokes feelings gratitude giving in contagious so spend and benefit yourself and bring benefit to others so here ayah number 266 surah al baqarah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us would one of you like to have a garden of palm garden of palm tree grape vine underneath which rivers flow in which he has from every fruit but then he is afflicted with old age he has weak of spring and at that time his garden is hit by a whirlwind containing fire and all of it is burned 
So would you like that to happen to you? So thus Allah makes clear to his verses that you might give in a thought. This is the example of the person who works hard for their entire life, investing whole lot of money into his garden, so much work and effort, but in the end it is burned to ashes. It is completely destroyed when he is in most need of it. So remember, if a person intention is corrupt, if they follow their charity with Riya, with the showing off and reminding people of the favor they have done them, hurting their feelings, then what's going to happen on the day of judgment? When they will be most in need of their good deed, they will find nothing. Their deeds will be scattered to dust ashes. So person should spend on good cause, but spend for the sake of Allah. Spend with sincerity. Do not show up. Just as we take care of our hard-earned money, we must also pay attention to preserving our hard and good deeds. Ayah number 267. Ya ayyuhal amunu. Again talking about spending, spending. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to the people who are believers, oh you who have believed, spend from the good things which you have earned. Another thing we learn here is that when we give, we should give from our own earnings and from that which we have produced for you from the earth, meaning give food also. And do not aim toward the defective therefrom, spending from that while you would not take it yourself except with the closed eyes. So give it to others, what, what would you like to receive yourself? Like, you know, you don't want anything defective for yourself, right? And know that Allah is free of need and praiseworthy. So when you are giving anything to anyone, give the good ones, not the defective ones. Ashaytanu ya'idukumul faqra wa ya'murukum bil fahsha. Shaitan threatens you with the poverty and shaitan orders you fahsha, immorality. Meaning when you are about to give what is good, shaitan makes you fear that what will become of you if you give what you have to others and shaitan orders you immorality to be stingy and to give what is not worthy taking or to show off. Well, Allah promises you forgiveness. Wallahu ya'idukum maghfirah. So here Allah is promising Fadl also and Wallahu Wasiyun Ali. While Allah promises you forgiveness from Him and bounty and Allah is all encompassing and knowing. And then here in Ayah number 269, Yutal Hikmah. He gives wisdom to whom he wills and whoever has been given wisdom has certainly been given a much good and none will remember except those of understanding. You see wisdom is mentioned over here. What is wisdom? This, uh, what is this which if a person has, they have abundant goodness and they have much good. Hikmah has been interpreted as understanding of the Quran, knowledge of religion, fear of Allah, ability to make the right decision, intelligent. If you think about all of this related to wisdom, because when a person has wisdom, they also have resources at their disposal. When they understand, they realize what is the best investment is which they can make. Who is it that they should spend on? What cause should they give in? How much should they give? And this is how they accumulate a lot of reward, lot of goodness. People who have good sense of money, they make a lot of profit with their money. They invest in good places. And there are other people who don't have that good sense. So they have that money just sitting with them. They're just spending from it or just keeping it. It's not growing. So the person who has wisdom, who understand how to spend their resources, how to use their time, the resources that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, the opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them, how to use them in the best way. Then such people accumulate a lot of good and that is why such a person actually worth envy. There's a hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, there are two people who are worthy envy. 
and one of them is a person to whom Allah has given wisdom. So he acts accordance with it and he teaches to others because such a person accumulate much good. So we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us wisdom. Ayah number 270, Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفْقَةٍ And whatever you spend of expenditure or make of vows, indeed Allah knows of it. And for the wrongdoers, there are no helpers. So what does this ayah shows us that Allah knows about what we spend on our personal needs, on our desire, charity, entertainment, and religion, pleasure. He knows where our money goes, what our spending habits are, what is the pattern of spending. And this is something that should make us reflect my way of spending is this something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would like. We have to check ourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the intention behind why we spend. And also he knows the amount that we give. But in Allah ya'alamuhu wa ma li min min ansar. And for the wrongdoers, there are no helpers. So this verse also show us that those who spend, who give in Allah's cause, then they are the ones who receive Allah's help because the wrongdoers, the stingy or those who do not spend on those in need, who do not give zakah or who are even stingy with their own family, such wrongdoers do not have any helpers. But those who spend in good cause, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their helper and this shows us that when we face any hurdle in, in any matter, how is it that we should solve that? We should solve with sadaqa. Charity and ayah number 271 in If you disclose your charity, charitable expenditure, they are good. Meaning, sometimes you know, spending publicly is actually very good. Letting your charity be known to others is good. Why? Because that encourages other people to spend. But if you conceal them and give them to the poor, it is better for you, not just for dignity of the poor, but also for your intention. He will remove from you some of your misdeeds thereby. So the person who fears their sins is uh, their misdeeds. Then what should they do? They should begin spending in the way of Allah. Because then their sins will be erased. The fire of their sins will be extinguished. And their circumstances will improve. And Allah with what you do is fully acquainted. Because Wallahu bima tamaluna khabir. In the hadith, we learn that the secret charity is something that calms the anger of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we fear that uh, wrong we have done, we are afraid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upset with us, what is it we need to do? Give sadhka, especially give charity, sadhka privately. Sometimes, you know, our near ones need money and they, they are in need and that time we spend in privately that really helps them because if we are not tarnishing their honor also not upon you is responsibility for their guidance but Allah guides whom he wills and whatever good you believe spend is for yourself you know apparently when you are spending it seems as though you are giving it to someone else but in reality it is going in your own record of deeds you do not spend except seeking the faces, continence of Allah subhanahu wa What is the thing we are getting it? Continence. This should be our ultimate goal. The reason why we spend that we seek the face of Allah, continence of Allah. The thing is that between us and Allah is a wall of our sins. Our own sins becomes a barrier. So when we give sadhka, this wall breaks down and this will enable us to see Allah directly on the day of judgment and to be with him. Whatever you spend of good, it will be fully repaid to you and you will not be wrong. You will get it back again when you give to others. It seems as though you are losing, you are losing your money. But that is not the case. When you give in the way of Allah, your money is actually being secured. Why is it that we take our money to the bank? Why do we keep it there? In order that it may be safe, even though we know that it's not sitting in a box in the bank, no, the bank is using it, but we trust the bank to use our money. Then when we need it, we have that confidence that we can always get it from there. So the fact is that 
our money is safer with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is actually increasing with Allah. But it is important that we have ikhlas, kulus, we have sincerity when we spend for the sake of Allah. In the hadith, we learn that Allah does not accept any deed except that which is purely for Him and seeking His countenance face. We learn in the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with those who give. We learn that whoever spends in um, spends in order to seek the wajhillah, face of Allah, continence of Allah. Why does he spend to see Allah? And he ends on that. Meaning this is how his life ends. This will with this is the way he will enter the Jannah. Spending, spending, wajhillah. So ayah number 273, Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about charity especially for the poor, fuqara who have been restricted for the cause of Allah, unable to move about in the land. Meaning night and day, they are busy with the religion of Allah, learning it, defending it, being in the company of Prophet ﷺ. These were the Ashabu Safa, people who had migrated to Medina in order to be with the Prophet ﷺ. They did not have their homes or their families in Medina. They did not have any source of income. And their entire time would be spent in the surface of Islam. This is very important. I, I number 273. Allah says an ignorant person would think them self-sufficient because of their restraint. But you will know them by the characteristic sign. They do not ask people persistently. And whatever you spend of good, indeed, Allah is knowing of it. So give to those who serve the deen of Allah. Especially, you see, when there is a poor person, then when you give them something, there is no expectation of a return. When you give a gift to a wealthy person, then you know it, it will be reciprocated. You will get something back from them. But here the fukhara are mentioned, the poor are mentioned, because when you will give them, you know, you will not get any return from them. This is in fact purer for you. And this is also better for the religion of Allah. Because this will not cause people to beg. So give before someone comes begging to you. When you know that someone has a need, fulfill it. You know somebody is spending their life for the cause of Allah. They are propagating the religion. They are learning the religion. So why don't you help them? Why don't you help them? So that is the main reason here talking about Ashab al Sufa. They are the people who were learning, learning, learning. They spend their life in the learning. About them they are talking. Allazina yunfikuna ambalahum billayli wa nahari. Those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah, then by the night, by the night, how is, by the day and the night. Billayli wa nahari wa sirra wa alaniya. Secretly, publicly, so to act upon this, I give some charity in the night time, especially in the month of Ramadan, in the middle of your qiyam, when you take a break, don't just sit there on your phone scrolling through your uh, Instagram and Facebook and so on. Do something, do some charity. They will have the reward with their Lord and no fear will be concerning them nor will they grieve. So we see in this ayah that sadhaka is actually cured. For what? For fear, grief on the day of judgment. When people will be in fear, those who give charity will be safe. When people will be sad, those who give charity will be secure. They will have no worries because the Prophet ﷺ said, Zillu mu'min yawm al qiyamati sadaqah. The shade of the believer on the day of judgment is his charity. So these verses were about those who give, those who spend on others. Now the following verses are about those who are greedy, who are always concerned about taking even from those who are poor. Allazina yakuluna riba, talking about the riba now. Those who consume interest, interest is riba. Ayah number 275, Surah Al-Baqarah. Such people, they cannot stand on the day of resurrection except as one stand who is being beaten by shaitan into insanity. Why? Because look at how insane they are. They are, they give a loan to someone and in return they take back more than what they give. They exploit the poor, they take advantage of the need of the poor. This is because they say trade is just like interest. They rationalize it. 
but allah has permitted trade and has forbidden interest so they cannot be the same so whoever has received an admonition from allah and desist may have what is past is a face rest with allah but whoever returns to it those are the companions of the fire they will abide there eternally returning to interest going back to taking interest this is a huge crime you see giving and taking interest both are both are wrong both are sinful in fact interest has been described as one of the unforgivable sins and here in hadith we learn that he who eats interest will be resurrected on the day of judgment as an insane person beaten to insanity like how a person is when they are possessed by a jinn because their greed for wealth has made them crazy and just like that on the day of judgment they will stand like a crazy person like a insane person remember that every person who is associated with the interest is cursed prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cursed the acceptor of riba the one who take the riba and it spare akali riba wal mukil the one who feeds riba to others but our problem is that based on this ayah we say oh eating interest is wrong giving interest is not wrong you understand that's what the people say what did rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say he cursed the people he cursed the people who give riba how can we be settled with that how can we be okay with that? the person who records it the two witnesses and he said they are all equal in another hadith we learn about severe punishment that was being given to the people who consume interest and this punishment was shown to the prophet so the fact is that riba is really not worth it it's really not worth it, it is a sin for which punishment in this world and the next life so this is the punishment you know people think you know it's okay one can take the riba eating the riba no it's not okay taking riba dealing with the riba any kind of transaction with the riba what is wrong is wrong can you say the wrong incorrect way of earning and uh, striving for it is it right no it's not when something is wrong is wrong wrong can't be uh, corrected by you know certain statements you can't so here talking about the riba taking and dealing with the riba any kind of riba dealing it's wrong it's incorrect that's what here talking about so yam hafullahu riba and by your bas sadaqat and here talking about allah destroy interest and increase for the charity so talking about the riba and also the increase of the sadaqa two comparison also has been given here because when people talks they don't even look at the ayah what ayah talks about they keep on saying the things without even understanding it what religion says what islam says they are not concerned about what religion or what islam says they are only concerned about their own thoughts so here talking about yamhukullaha riba wa yarbu sadaqat and allah destroy interest and he give increase to charity allah destroys interest meaning he orders that it to be abolished that it be erased there is a hadith ibn abbas said that allah does not accept the charity striving like you know the hajj or the salah of the one who deals with the interest meaning any good deed they do they are not accepted on the other hand allah gives increase for the charity you know you are doing the charity any kind of thing so allah increases in that so riba and charity they, these are two different things and uh, any good deed they do they are not accepted on the other hand allah give increases for the charity meaning he orders that charity must be given but riba is not ibn abbas said allah reward those who give charity in this world and he bless their wealth in the hereafter also he will reward them multiply them and allah does not like every sinning disbeliever 
kaffar in asim superlative degree kaffar and so if a person deals with the interest then they will be deprived of allah's love because it says wallahu la yuhibbul allah does not like such people who is kaffar kaffar is an extreme denier meaning the person who denies the seriousness of the interest the crime of the interest a seem sinful meaning he consume interest and hence he commits sin Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that no one increase their wealth with interest except that their outcome will be shortage of wealth meaning they won't actually increase in their wealth but because of the interest their wealth with actually reduces over time they will have less and less because yam huqullah riba there can be no blessing in the wealth that is stained with the interest there is a hadith Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the one who earns unlawful wealth and then frees a slave with it or gives it to the relatives from it then this will be a source of punishment for him you know some people they think okay i am not going to take the riba i have the poor relatives i am going to give them no you can't because in this hadith you can't use for yourself nor for your relatives meaning instead of getting reward is actually he or she gain some more sins for using it haram unlawful money so stay away from it it's not worth make the intention to leave it right away i number 277 surah al baqara indeed those who believe and do righteous deeds and establish uh, salah give zakat they will have their reward with their lord and there will be no fear concerning them nor will they grieve again wala khaufun alaihim wala hum yahzanun this is the ajr first allah is talking about people who believe and do righteous deeds they establish salah and give zakat for them the reward with their lord subhanallah then ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqu O oh, you who have be- believed, fear Allah, fear Allah, and give up that what remains due to you of interest. If you should be believer, if you have iman, then leave riba. Simple. So we have iman. Don't look for the fatwa shopping. Don't look for the excuses. Two seventy nine. If you do not, then be informed of a war against you from Allah and His Messenger. If you do don't want to leave riba. then come and fight allah come and fight with this messenger astaghfirullah we can't but if you repent you may have your principle thus you do not wrong nor are you wronged i number 280 surah al baqara and if someone meaning someone who has taken loan from you they are in hardship then let their bear postpone meant until the time of ease meaning don't charge any interest now but if you give the loan as a charity meaning you uh, pardon them it's completely then this is better for you if you only know i number 281 surah al baqara wattaqu yawman and fear a day when you will be returned to allah remember you are not staying in this world forever then every soul will be compensated for what it earned they will not be treated unjustly so do not put your akhirah at risk for the temporary gains of this life surah al baqara has the greatest verses in ayat al kursi it has the longest verse of the quran in which ayat al din i number 282 ya ayyuhal ladina aman o you who have believed when you contract a debt for a specified term then write it down and let a scribe write it between you in justice so you see when you leave something to a relative record it because lot of conflict stems from money mismanagement so to save yourself from doubt and to save other people from doubt to have clarity write down such transaction and let the scribe write it between you in justice let no scribe refuse to write as allah has taught him so let him write and let the one who has obligation dictate meaning the one who is taking the loan should be the one to dictate to scribe and let him fear allah his lord and not leaving anything out of it but if 
the one who has obligation is of limited understanding or weak or unable to dictate himself then let his guardian dictate injustice and bring to witness to witness from among your men if there are not two men available then a man and a two women from those whom you accept as witnesses why so that if one of the women do the mistake then the other woman can remind her meaning the other will only assist her when there is a need and let not the witnesses refuse when they are called upon and do not be too weary to write it whether it is a small or larger for its specific term that is more just in the sight of allah and a stronger evidence and more likely to prevent doubt between you except when it is an immediate transaction which you conduct among yourself meaning a transaction that you conclude immediately there is no need to write that but when there is a delayed payment when there is borrowing uh, when there is lending then make sure you record them for then there is no blame upon you if you do not write it and take witnesses when you conclude the contract means for official business transaction or bigger contract make sure there are witness along with the documentation let no scribe be harmed or any witnesses for if you do intend it's a grave disobedience in you and fear allah and allah teaches you allah is knowing of all things ayah number 283 wa in kuntum ala safarin if you are on a journey and cannot find a scribe then security deposit should be taken as a collateral and if one of you entrust another then let him who is entrusted discharge his trust faithfully and let him fear allah his lord and do not conceal testimony for whoever conceal it his heart is indeed sinful and this shows us that even the heart can commit sin there are sins of the heart there are sins of the tongue and there are sins of the hands and allah is knowing what you do now the last ayah of surah al baqara lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard so here ayah number 284 to 286 now the final concluding verses of surah al baqara lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard to allah belongs whatever is in the heaven and whatever is in the earth whether you show what is it within yourself or conceal it allah will bring you to account for it then he will forgive whom he wills and punish whom he wills and allah is over all things competent ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhu reported that when this verse was revealed that whether you disclose what is in yourself or you conceal it then allah will call you to account for it there entered in the minds of the companions of fear that had never entered their minds and hearts before meaning the companions became very afraid that how can we have control over what is in our hearts if we are held accountable for what is in the heart then we will be doomed so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them say samana wa atana so that we heard and we have obeyed and we have submitted ourselves so ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhu said oh on this aya on this allah fill their heart with the iman because when a person hears a command of allah whether it's related to charity or interest or anything else he says in his heart samana wa atana so Oh Allah now I have come to know of this I have made this intention I will obey and submit to you I will not resist I will do this then Allah will fill the heart of such a person with iman and so what happened then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed next two verses which are the last two verses of surah al baqara and remember these two verses like surah al fatiha are from the treasure beneath the throne of Allah and a person does not recite any word of this verses except they are benefited because of them this is why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam urged 
to recite this recite the last two verses of surah al baqara the two verses are so powerful that if a person recite them in the night then kafara like this is uh, ka kafi they will suffice them meaning they will be enough for his protection forgiveness and some said that they will also be enough for his reward for the night prayer they will dispel his fear they will dispel his stress his worries his anxiety there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that two verses are not recited in a house for three night except shaitan will not be able to come close to it this is the thing mentioned so fortify yourself fortify your home and people within your home by reciting this verses every night make it a point to memorize them and recite them regularly amana rasul bima unzila ilayhi mir rabbihi the messengers has believed what was revealed to him from his lord so have the believers so subhanallah allah accept their iman iman of the prophet the iman of the companion iman is approved what is it they believed in all of them have believed in allah and his angels as we learn in the beginning of surah al baqara allazina yu'minuna bil ghaib surah al baqara ayah 3 they believe in unseen and they also believe in his book and messenger as we learn in the beginning of surah al baqara وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ They believed in all of the revelation. They say we make no distinction between any of his messenger. So we see this ayah covers all of the pillars of iman, the belief in Islam, belief in Allah, books, messengers, uh, and divine decree that is true. not mention over here why because this is actually result of believing all of this and it is covered in the words wa qalu samana wa ta'ana and they say we hear and we obey so you see believing in divine decree is to accept decree of allah the decision of allah both his religion command his decree related to our lives whatever is happening whatever is coming my way my circumstances all of this is by allah's decree so i accept it i'll do whatever my lord has command me to do but then you realize how imperfect imperfect you are ghufranaka rabbana we seek your forgiveness our lord by like al masir and to you is the final destination so there is no escape from you except to you so we see over here that before asking for forgiveness taat and sama to listen and obey then ask forgiveness so this shows us that whenever we want to seek forgiveness then before that we should try to do something good we should try to perform some act of obedience prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever performs wudu as i have and remember making wudu is an act of worship it's an act of obedience then he prays two rakat without letting his thought wander then all of his previous sins will be forgiven so when you want to seek forgiveness proceed with some act of obedience sometime the guilt of sins weigh heavy in the heart you think about all the things you have done wrong in your past because of the ignorance your foolishness and your wonder how do i fix that this is how you fix that you do something good you pray to raka you beg allah for forgiveness keep doing good keep seeking forgiveness i number 286 la yukallifu allah nafsan illa wus'aha allah does not charge a soul except with that with its capacity laha ma kasabat wa alaiha ma ktasabat it will have the consequence of what good it has gained and it will bear the consequence of what evil it has earned meaning a person is responsible for the choice they make because you reap what you sow this ayah shows us that every command of allah whether it is of the kalif kauniya meaning related to our worldly matters the kalif sharia religious obligation every decree of allah is such that it is a doable for us because the fact is that there is no one who knows us better than allah subhanahu wa taala so if he decides something for our lives 
or if he command us to do something then it cannot be beyond our ability it cannot be beyond our strength but still we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ease we ask allah for help because la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there is no power but no strength except with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we ask him we pray him rabbana la tu'aqizna in nasina aw akhtana our lord do not impose blame upon us if we forgotten or do the error if we have made a mistake we will obey we also know that there will be times when we will forget and we will make mistakes on account of our ignorance because we are qattaun we are those who error rabbana wala tahmil alaina isan kama hamaltahu ala alladhina min qablina our lord and lay not upon us a burden what kind of burden obligation restriction like that which you laid upon those before us meaning do not give us a burden that is difficult like the one was imposed on the people before us meaning make our religion and your decrees easy for us rabbana wala tuhammilna ma la taqat lana bi our lord and burden us not that which we have no ability to bear meaning the trial of life or commands in religion or imposition yani make them easy for us waaf wanna and pardon us erase wipe our shortcoming erase our neglect waghfir lana and forgive us conceal our errors warhamna and have mercy upon us do not humiliate on the day of judgment anta maulana you are our protector you are all able to protect and help us we only have to turn to anta maulana fansuna alal qaumil kafirin so you give us victory over the disbelieving people meaning ya la help us against our eternal hurdles and external hurdles so this verse shows us the ability is limited we are truly weak this is why we ask allah to give us what we can bear remember this dua duas are actually accepted duas because every time sahaba recited one of this we learn in hadith allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond qad fa'altu qad fa'altu dan dan this is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this religion easy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this religion is al hanifa samha the easy and gentle we see that islam is not that it is pushes us to the point of breaking in the name of great or in the name of resilience or in name of piety no the nature of islamic law is such that when things become unbearable hard for the people the law provides them concessions it lightens the burden from them we see that if a person just intends to do something wrong no sin is written for them until they actually commit a sin if a person forgets or do something wrong again they are not guilty of sin if a person does something wrong out of ignorance then they repent later allah will forgive them so if a person is doing going through usr through difficulty allah has given them yusr he also given them ease so this verses bring us hope they bring us courage we express our need of allah in this verses we expresses our dependency on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember this was gifted to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at miraj so make their recitation as part of our routine your nightly routine so that you also get hope and courage and also connect with the lord you also get the ease that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised so suratul ali imran so here in suratul ali imran talking about uh, surah ali imran alif lam mim it starts with huruf e muqatta surah ali imran just like suratul baqara has lot of virtue prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said learn the quran for it will come as a intercessor on the day of judgment learn suratul baqara and ali imran and he said learn these two lights for they will come on the day 
as there were two clouds two shades or two flocks of birds in rows pleading for those who recite them like you know we recite daily in a routine or like you know daily reciting few ayahs and completing surah al baqara surah al uh, ali imran or memorizing it that it's a normal routine so we see that the knowledge the recitation of this surah is something that will be a means of protection for a person on the day of judgment bismillahir rahmanir rahim alif lam mim allah la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum allah there is no deity except him the ever living sustainer of existence he has sent down upon you a prophet the book in truth confirming what was before it and he has revealed the torah and the injil before as the guidance for the people and so remember the purpose of the book of allah is to guide people he revealed the fuqan criterion indeed who disbelieve in the verses allah will have a severe punishment allah is exalted in might and number 5 and 6 surah al al-imran indeed from allah nothing is hidden in the earth nor in the heaven it is he who forms you in the wombs uh however he wills so however you are however someone is that that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted so allah love the way he has created you do not criticize your physical appearance because allah made you in the best way never ever say that i lack this and that no allah has made you perfect alhamdulillah it is who has sent down to you prophet book in it verses that are muhkamat that are precise meaning they are clear in their meaning and they contain clear command and these verses they are foundation of the book meaning the majority of the quran is like that such verses as the foundation for understanding the rest of the quran and then there are other verses which are mutashabihat others that that are unspecific for example alif lam mim what does it mean we don't know we should not obsess like uh, over there verses or things that are mentioned in the quran and argue or debate like whatever the thing is mentioned we should accept it but as for those in people in whose heart is deviation fi khulubihim zaighun from the truth they will follow that of in which is unspecific meaning they obsess over them as a entire religion based upon as if the only thing that quran contains are those unspecific verses why do they do that seeking discord and seeking interpretation meaning meaning that is suitable to them and no one knows its true interpretation except allah but those firm in knowledge say we believe in it all of it from our lord no one will remind it except those of understanding ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه so here another dua ay number 8 surah al al imran who says our lord let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه and grant us from your self mercy we are desperately in need of your mercy in nagantal wahab indeed you are the best one so the liberal bestower of gifts so shower your gifts upon us you are the giver so gift us with guidance and steadfast upon guidance we neither leave this path nor forget about it remember the perseverance of the heart which is mentioned over here in this ayah this is something very important because if the heart is in right place if the heart is guided then iman then a person actions are also good and uh, there is a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said person faith cannot be corrected until his heart is corrected and his heart cannot be corrected until his tongue is corrected the heart is most important part of your being it is the heart where taqwa is attaqu attaqwa ha huna it is in the heart where decisions are made this is why ask allah to guide the heart allahumma hdini qalbi wa saddid lisani wa slul saqimati qalbi that oh allah guide my heart correct my tongue and remove rancor from my heart allahumma jal fi qalbi nura 
ask Allah to fill your heart with the light that O oh Allah make light in my heart I ask Allah to make your heart firm Allahumma musarrifa qulubi sarrif qulubana ala ta'atik O oh Allah the turner of the hearts turn our hearts to our obedience ask Allah to clean the heart Allahumma fsil qalbi bima salji wal baradi wa naqti qalbi min qatayaya kama naqayta sawba abiyada min ad-danas that O oh Allah wash my heart with water, hail and snow and clean my heart meaning remove all sins from my heart the way you clean a white cloth from stains and remember that seeking forgiveness is something that cleans the heart Prophet said there is time some sort of shade like a cover you know some kind of shade upon my heart I seek forgiveness from Allah hundred times a day so seek forgiveness and clean the heart pray to Allah protect you from the evil of your own heart Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min sharri sam'i wa min sharri basari wa min sharri lisani wa min sharri qalbi O oh Allah protect me from the evil of my heart wa min sharri manni I ask Allah to protect it from becoming hard Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min ilmi la yanfaw wa min duai la yusmaw wa min qalbi la yaksha that O oh Allah protect me from heart that does not fear you Ask Allah to adorn, to beautify your heart. Allahumma habbab ilayna al-eemana wa zayyanahu fi qulubina. That, O oh Allah, make iman, belief to us and adorn our heart with iman. And ask Allah to make your heart sound. Wa as'aluka qalban saliman wa lisanan. Sadiqan and ask for a sound heart and a truthful tongue. So when someone is hurting in their heart, whether it is anxiety, bothering them or depression, they are suffering from unhealthy love, unhealthy attachment. They have developed, then pray for them. Allahumma shfi qalbi. That, O oh Allah, heal his heart. Wa shfi sakhama. And cure his illness. Allahumma ahdi qalba. That, O oh Allah, guide his heart. Allahumma shfi qalba. O oh Allah, cure his heart. Ayah number 9 and 10 and 11. Surah Al-Imran. Our Lord, surely you will gather the people for day about which there is no doubt. Indeed, Allah does not fail in his promise. Indeed, those who believe never will their fail. Wealth or children avail them. Again, so, uh, at all. And it is they who are the fuel of fire. I number 11, there is like the custom of the people of Pharaoh, those before them. An example is given from history. Like uh, in I number 11, they deny our signs. So Allah sees them for their sins. And Allah is severe in penalty. It means, Wallahu shadeedul iqab. I number 12, say to those who disbelieve, you will be overcome. They disbelieve who come to the Badr to fight Prophet ﷺ being warned over here. That just as you were defeated in Badr in no time, you will be completely defeated. And gathered together to hell and wretched is the resting place. I number 13, all, already there has been for you a sign in two armies which met. One fighting in the cause of Allah and another of disbelievers at Badr. They saw them to be twice their own number by their eyesight. So at Badr what happened is that each side viewed the other as twice their own number. So the Muslim actually saw the Makkans as only 600 or so. And this uplifted them and the Makkans saw Muslim as 2000. And this frightened them. But Allah's support with his victory, hope he will intend in that is a lesson for those who have vision. La ibratul li ulil absar. Ayah number 14. 
Suyina lin nasi hubbu shahwat. Beautified for the people is the love of that which they desire. Meaning, their desirable things are made believed to people. What are these desirable things? Woman, son, heaped up some of gold, silver, fine, branded horses. Means these days branded cars and cattle, uh, tilled land. This is enjoyment of worldly life. And Allah has with him the best return. So this love which is in the heart of the people is there. But it is actually a test. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create our heart void of any feeling, void of any love. No. This love and this attraction for pleasure, it will be better. But it is a test. That are you going to get lost in it or are you going to prefer Allah? Are you going to just enjoy these things or are you going to use them in pursuing the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How we are using it? And Kul Nunabbi'ukum So Unabbi'ukum Allah says, Shall I inform you of something better than that? Be khairin min zalikum. So these things are great and enjoyment like them is not same, something bad. What is problematic is that a person thinks that they are everything. So he makes them ultimate goal and he gets immersed in enjoying them and does not look forward to what is better. So what is that what Allah has saved for the hereafter? Remember to get higher level of jannah. Some desires not to be curbed. Some desire not to be disciplined. There is a hadith. Prophet Wasallam said, What I fear for my nation is three things. And of them is desire that is followed. And he also said, The sweetness of the world can be bitterness in the hereafter. And the bitterness of this world can actually be sweetness in the hereafter. So remember this world is not everything. There is something much better. And what is that? For those who fear Allah will be gardens. Gardens are eternal in the presence of the Lord beneath which river flows. Where they will abide eternally and purified spouse and approval from Allah. So no one will be single in Jannah. And Allah is seeing of his servants. Ayah number 16 Allazina yaquluna rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana zunubana waqina azabanna Those who say our Lord indeed we have believed so forgive us our sins and protect us from the punishment of fire who are the fortunate people As-sabirina was-sadikina wal-qanitina wal-munfikina wal-mustaghfina bil-ashar so here talking about ayah number 17, those who are patient, sabr, those who are true, obedient, those who spend in the way of Allah and those who seek forgiveness before dawn. Amazing, they get up before Fajr, seek forgiveness from Allah. So we should compare ourselves to the characteristics that are mentioned over here. That do I possess them? What is the first one? as sabirina those who are patient. Ibn al-Qayyim said there are three forms of patience. One over command, so person fulfills them. The second over the prohibition, so person avoids them. The third over the degree, so person does not get upset because of them. But Saudikina, those who are truthful. Katada said they are those who are true in their intention, in their action, in their heart also. Their tongue, their upright, who are good in private and public. So this is truthfulness, this is honestly that a person is not double-faced. And well, coin like those who devotely obedient, whatever Allah commands them with, with the, they do it. How? With the humility, consistency. Well, munfikina, those who spend, meaning they spend in the way Allah subhanahu wa has commanded them, relatives on needy, in the way of Allah. And well, Mustafina bil ashar, and they seek forgiveness at the time of the dawn because they realize their sins, and this shows us importance of seeking forgiveness before dawn. So this time is very important. 
when allah descends to the lowest heaven and he asks who is there who will call upon me so i will answer him who is there who will ask me so i will give him who is there who will seek forgiveness from me so i will forgive him and this continues until fajr so make a habit to wake up early in the morning i am talking about tahajjud prayer make it a habit to do tahajjud regularly shahid allah annahu allah witness that there is no deity except him and so do the angels and those of knowledge and he is maintaining creation in justice there is no deity except him the exalted in might in the wise indeed the religion in the sight of allah is islam and those who were given the scripture did not differ except knowledge had come to them out of jealousy and animosity between themselves and whoever disbelieve in the words of allah then indeed allah is swift in taking the account for in had you and so if they argue with you see i have submitted myself to allah in islam and so have those who follow me and you say to those who were given the scripture to the unlearned have you submitted yourself and if they submit in islam then they are rightly guided but if they turn away there upon is only the duty of notification and allah is seeing of his servant so here talking about just convey the message wa in tawallaw fa inna ma alaykal bala wallahu basirun bil ibad just convey the message inna allazina and then here talking about in ayah number 21 those who disbelieve in the sight of allah and kill the prophets without right and kill those who order justice from among the people give them tidings of a painful punishment by number 22 and 23 they are the ones who deeds have become worthless in this world and the hereafter for them there will be no helpers habitat amaluhum فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنَ النَّاسِرِينَ I number 23 and 24 do you not consider those who were given a portion of scripture they are invited to the scripture of Allah that it should be arbitrate between them then a party of them turn away and they are refusing 24 this is because they say never will the fire touch us except for new few number days because they were deluded in their religion but what they were inventing i number 25 so how it will be when assemble them for a day about which there is no doubt and each soul will be compensated in full what it earned and they will not be wrong i number 26 and 27 qul allahumma malikal mulk O oh, say, O oh Allah, the owner of sovereignty, to the al-mulka mantasha, you give sovereignty to whom you will. So, if someone has any power, sovereignty, any level of ownership, it is Allah's favor upon them. But then, say, O al-mulka mim mantasha, and you take sovereignty away from whom you will. But to izzo mantasha, but to zillu mantasha, your honor. whom you wills and you humble whom you wills in your hands is all good be a dikal khair you are over all things competent so remember good is from allah khair is from allah so any ability or opportunity to good that person has actually been given to them by allah subhanahu wa taala so we should ask allah to use us in good work to give us more and more opportunities of good work i number 27 you cause the night to enter day you cause the day to enter the night so such a massive change so consistently allah subhanahu wa taala causes to happen you bring the life out of dead and you bring the dead out of life and you give provision to whom you will without account a uh, number 28 uh, let not believers take disbelievers as aliens rather than the believers and whoever of you does that has nothing with allah except when taking precaution against them 
in prudence and allah wants you of himself to allah is the final decision and see whether you conceal what is in your chest or reveal allah knows about and he knows that which is in heaven and that which is on the earth allah is over all things competent i number 30 the day of judgment here that day is not far every soul will find that what he has done of good present before in what it has done of evil it will wish that between itself and that evil was a great distance imagine when the records will be laid open and our deeds will be on display a person will be so embarrassed he will wish to be far away from his sins from his deeds he will wish for his sins to be removed from him but the time to remove them is now because here and allah wants you of himself and allah is rauful bil ibad he is kind to his servant so subhanallah fear allah and also have hope in his kindness and because remember iman is supposed to be between fear and hope any extreme is unhealthy so remain in the middle so this is a warning and who fears here fears allah who is it that develops the fear of allah inna ma yakhsha allah min ibadil ulama surah al fatiha number 28 allah tells us that it is those who have knowledge among his servants who actually fear him so the more a person knows allah the more they fear man kana billahi alam kana lahu akhwah akhawf so true in their claim of loving allah qul in kuntum tahibbuna allah if you should love allah fattabi'uni then follow me what will happen yuhibbukum allah then allah will love you and forgive you your sins what you fear will be removed from you and allah is forgiving and merciful amazing following prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually a proof of person's love for allah everyone claims to love um, allah but the real proof of that is following prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if a person does not do that then their claim of loving allah is actually false and here three do three things he told them about three thing that could do action points so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you truly love allah and his messenger should love you then guard three qualities sadaqul hadith be truthful in speech second fulfill your trust adaul amana husnul jawar thirdly good neighbor because hurting the neighbor erase good deeds ayah number 32 qul ati allah war rasul obey allah and his messenger so if they turn away fa in tawallaw fa in allah la yuhibbul kafirin then indeed allah does not like the disbelievers ayah number 33 Surah Al Imran indeed Allah chose Adam and Noah as his family and family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran over the worlds zurriyatan baduha min bad they were descendants some of them from others and Allah is hearing and knowing ayah number 35 is qalat imratu imran so Allah He says, mentioned when wife of Imran said that, my Lord, indeed I have pledged to you what is in my womb. So, meaning my child, consecrated for your service. Muharraran patakabbal minni. So, accept this from me. Indeed, you are hearing, knowing. So, you see there are many type of people. There are some people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for both deen and dunya. so he gave them of this world and he also blessed them with his religion they both have they excel in both there are some people who only have a deen like ashabus sufa 
right? Then sir, they were farmers, they had money, they had property. Muhajirin also, they were traders. Ashabu Sufa, they were dedicated to deen completely. And this has also been the case. There are some people who have to make the sacrifice. They have to give up their worldly pursuits and to pursue the religion of Allah. And this is what this woman wanted for her child. She wanted her child to be dedicated for the worship exclusively, nothing else. So she said, the child of mine will be muharrara, meaning free from any obligation to me, free from any worldly occupation, completely dedicating to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the service of the religion. Falamma, and here in ayah number 36, but when she delivered her, she said, My Lord, I have delivered a female. She thought her child would be a boy. And because it was boy at that time who did such work. So look at her. She is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She says, Call it. She said, Rabbi, my Rabb, inni wada'atuha unsa. She is talking to Allah. Remember that the best solution to our problem is in talking to Allah. Be friend to Allah and your life will become easy. Talk to Allah. You see, we want to talk to people, but people are not always available. Sometimes they even charge us, right? You go for a therapy and you have to pay the whole lot of money. And of course, if you need therapy, you must go. This is not anything against that. But my point is that people are not always available or accessible. But when you talk to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there, always accessible. You send a message to a person, they haven't even read your message yet or better. They leave you unread and it is so hurtful. So, talk to Allah and actually verbalize your feeling before Allah. Don't just keep them in your heart like this lady did. She said, Rabbi inni wada'tuha unsa. Allah says, Wallahu alamu bima wadad. And Allah was most knowing of what she delivered. Sometimes we don't make dua, we don't talk to Allah because we think Allah already knew. Yes, of course, He knows. But when you talk to Allah, that is when you feel closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is when you unburn, unburden yourself. You feel relieved, relaxed. Remember, a relationship is not just about knowing what someone is going through. It is with communication. So communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk to Allah. Pour your heart out before Him. And the male is not like the female. Balaisa zakaru kal unsa. Meaning they are not identical. Yes, they are similarity, but they are also fundamental difference and each has their own unique set of tried strengths, ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen them. So at the times when can do what the other cannot and women can do what a man cannot. So you don't have to be someone else to do something. You have to be who you are to do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She says, I have named her Maryam. I seek refuge for her in you, for her descendants from shaitan. The expel from the mercy of Allah. So the first thing she did is that the, she gave her child in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah says? فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا Bihubulin Hasanan. And number 37. So her Lord accepted her with good acceptance. Allah accepted the deeds which are done with sincerity. And he caused her to grow in good manners. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who caused children to grow. He develops them. He nourishes them. He sustains them. He provides them. Parents only put in some effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who truly ambataha. So give your children in Allah's care. Make dua. 
Oh Allah, as you took care of Yusuf al-Islam in Egypt, as you took care of Musa al-Islam in the house of Pharaoh, you protect my child, you guide my child. And Allah put her in the care of Zakaria al-Islam, who was a prophet of this time and also the relative of Maryam al-Islam, who could be a better guardian, who could be a better teacher, a better mentor. So she stayed in the masjid, in mihrab, in her prayer chamber, devoted in worship and study. And because her father was not uh, alive, Prophet Zakaria al-Islam would care for her. Allah says every time Zakaria al-Islam entered in her prayer chamber, he found with her provision. He says, O Maryam, from where is it coming to you? Uh, so... Vajada in the hair is kakala ya mariamu anni laki haza. So in ayah number 38, here says, Huna lika da'a Zakariya rabbahu. At that, Zakariya al-Islam called upon his Lord. My Lord, Rabbi habli min ladun ka zurriyatan tayyibatan. O Lord, grant me from yourself. I want from you. Because I know you have, I know you can give, I know you are generous. So I want from you. I want a good offspring. Indeed, you are a hearer of supplication. So you see, Zakaria al-Islam saw how a young woman was being blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And seeing her blessing made him call upon Allah. Look at how his hope in Allah increased. So when you see someone with blessing, you like it, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, you give it to them, you give it to me. There's nothing wrong in that. But don't get jealous of somebody. There's nothing wrong in asking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels called him while he was standing in prayer in chamber. Indeed, Allah gives you good tidings of Yahya. Subhanallah, his dua was accepted. Allah gives you good tidings of Yahya, confirming a word from Allah and who will be honorable, abstaining from women and profit from among the righteous. And number 40, Zakaria al-Islam said, My Lord, how will I have a boy when I have reached old age? My wife is barren. Amazing, he made dua. Now he himself is surprised. The angel said, Such is Allah. He does what he wills. I number 41, so um, Zakaria al-Islam said, my Lord, make me a sign. So I know for sure. He said, your sign is that you will not be able to speak to the people for three days except by gesture. And remember your Lord much and exalt him with praise in the evening and the morning. This is how we should receive. We should welcome the blessing of Allah. When we hear the good news of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, blessing for example a good proposal for marriage or news or pregnancy or acceptance into a program that you really wanted a job interview whatever it is you hear the good news you read the email or you get the notification then immediately thank Allah immediately praise Allah engage in the zikr engage in the tasbih shukar give sadhaka turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 42 and 43 but is called Adil malaika and mentioned when angel said, O oh Maryam, indeed Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the woman of the world. O oh Maryam, he devotely obedient to your Lord because Allah has chosen you. You also become obedient to Allah and prostrate and bow with those who bow in prayer. So this shows us that when Allah has blessed you with something, then you must be humble yourself even before Allah. And here 44 and 45, Zali come in Ambail Faibi, no he he ilaik. So these are informed by the Wahi. This is from the news of unseen, which we reveal to you, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you were not with them when they cast their pens as to which them should be responsible for Maryam, nor were you with them when they disputed. And I number 45. It's Khalatil Malaika. And when the angel said, O oh Maryam, uh, indeed Allah gives you good news of the word from him whose name will be Masih Isa ibn Maryam. 
distinguished in this world and the hereafter among those brought near to Allah. Now that Maryam al-Islam is added, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala employs her for his deen, uses her for his deen. Her mother wanted to dedicate her for Allah. She did not know how that actually would actualize. So make good intention. Then Allah fulfill your dreams. Allah will fulfill your promises. When the angel said, O oh Maryam, indeed Allah give you good tidings of a word from him, meaning a child who will be born because of word kun, whose name will be Masi, Isa, the son of Maryam, distinguished in this world and the hereafter among those brought near to Allah. And he will spoke to the people in the cradle and in maturity and will be righteous. She said, My Lord, how will I have a child when no man has touched me? It was said it will happen. Such is Allah. He creates what he wills. When he decree a matter, he only says to be, be and it will be. Lahu kun fayakun. Pan number 48 and 49. We are doing Surah Al-Imran. And he will teach him writing, wisdom and the Torah and the gospel and make him a messenger to the children of Israel who will say, Indeed, I have come to you with the sign from your Lord. Uh, in that, uh, I design for you from clay that which is like the form of a bird that I breathe into it and become a bird by permission of Allah. And I cure the blind and leper and I give life to the dead by permission of Allah. And I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses. Indeed, in that is a sign for you if you are a believer. And number 50 and 51, it says, And I have come confirming what was before me of Torah to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me. In Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abudu. Ayah number 51 and 52. So this is a straight path. Indeed Allah is my Lord and your Lord. So worship me. That is a straight path. 52. But when Isa al-Islam felt persistence in disbelief from them, he said, Who are my supporters for the cause of Allah? They said, Hawari disciples they said we are supporters for allah nahnu ansar allah so we have believed in allah and testify we are muslim they said our lord we have believed in what you have revealed and uh, have followed the messenger so registers us among the witness to the truth and uh, here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, in ayah number 16, Truth is from your Lord, do not be among the doubters. And if they turn away, then indeed Allah is knowing of the corruptors. And ya ahlal kitab, O people of scripture, why do you argue about Ibrahim al-Islam while the Torah and gospel were not revealed until after him, they will then will you not reason and in ayah number 69 a faction of the people of scripture which they could mislead you but they do not mislead except themselves they perceive it not ayah number 74 uh, he selects for his mercy whom he wills and allies position of great bounty ayah number 77 indeed those who exchange the covenant of allah and their own oath for a small price will have no share in the hereafter and Allah will not speak to them or look at them on the day of resurrection and he will purify them and they will have a nor Allah will purify them and nor will spoke to them and ayah number 80 wala ya murukum no would he order you to take angels and prophets as Lord? Would he order you to disbelieve after you had been Muslims? And ayah number 82. Who turn away after that. They were blindly disobedient. 
and here in ayah number 86 kayfa yahdillahu qauman how shall allah guide a people who disbelieved after their belief and had witnessed that messenger is true and clear signs had come to them allah does not guide the wrong doing people and ayah number 90 in allazina kafaru ba'da imanihim summa azdadu kufra lan tuqbala tawbatuhum wa ulaika humud dallu indeed those who reject the message after their belief and then increase in disbelief never will their claim repentance has accepted and they are the ones astray and here in ayah number 91 indeed those who disbelieve and die while they are disbelievers never would the whole capacity of the earth in gold be accepted from one of them he would seek to ransom himself with a penny if he offered so much gold on the day of resurrection take all of this and set free it will not accept it for those will be a painful punishment and they will be no helper so you see uh, here if a person does an atom weight of good today in this life it will be accepted it will be multiplied but on the day on the day of judgment millul ard the fill of earth in gold will not be accepted charity will not be accepted on the day so give it today do it today we learn that the person with the least punishment in hell will be brought out and asked would you offer earth fill in gold as ransom to come out of the hell he will say yes my lord and allah will say you have lied i ask you for what was less and easier it was easier you did not do it you do not associate anything with me but you did not even do that so we have to believe in allah and we have to abide by it jazakallah khair and kaseera do subscribe the channel please channel name is elm quran for all band bands are in english and urdu